Another black man in Texas dies in police custody. His family files a wrongful death lawsuit against the Texarkana Police Department uh, to release Darren Boykin's 2019 arrest footage. 23-year-old Boykin was arrested because he was a suspect in a string of petty thefts in the area. He's arrested and put in the police car driven by Officer Jerrica Weave. Yeah, you can turn it over. It's easier if you sit up to breathe. I can't sit up. Or, I know you guys need me to transport him back over to your guys' police car. Oh, we're just going to transport him. Here, Phil, Huh? Here, set up. What's his name? Jason Williams. 45. I know I'm going to want Thank you, Brandon. You ran the whole way? From the nursing, from the nursing building. Yeah, got your steps in, that's for sure. She's tough. Can you please knuckle my mom door right there? Oh, this is your house? Behind me. Huh? Behind no. me, brick house. No, you, no. you're going to be getting a phone call at some point downtown. Jason, you can do that then. Oh, if your family, listen to me, if your family oh, wants to come out here and pitch a fit, what's though. His, what are you saying date of birth is? What's your date of birth? 8592. 8592. Eight, okay. Let's go. He ahead. ran all this way and then he acts like he can't. Yeah. Stand up. Can't function. Stand up. Okay, sir. Stand up. You can function. It's either you're standing up or you're dragging. All right, cool. Come yes, on. Right. Well, Let's I'm drag him. I'm trying to get up. Come Hold on. on. Let me get my hands up. You want to put him in the back seat of mine? Yeah. Or you got one over here? Can you, uh, hey, can you push the unlock button on my driver's side? Okay. You can get in by yourself? Okay. Hold on. Do you have anything on that no. side? No. Do you have anything on that side? Alright, get All in. Alright. This is gonna be y'all's felony suspect too. Get in. I've seen the judge. You helped me, I can't. Get in or I'm gonna pull you in. So you good? During the 20-minute ride to the precinct, Boykin repeatedly tells Officer Jerrica Weaver that he could not breathe. She believed he was doing what they call felony faint. It's not until Officer Weaver arrives at the police station she realizes something is wrong. The lawsuit accuses Officers Weaver and Brent Hobbs and Sergeant William Scott of violating Boykin's civil rights by being deliberately indifferent to a medical crisis, resulting in Boykin's death. An autopsy rule that Boykin died of natural causes and notes complications of sickle cell trait. Terrain. You know, when your client tells you some of the things that the officers say to them when they're being arrested, you don't want to believe them. And that, I'm just being honest about that, right? Because you want to believe that the officers are acting in the best interest of um, everyone. But what the introduction of body cameras have done for policing is shown us the indifference that they have when they are interacting with suspects who are still citizens. And they still are responsible for caring for them and making sure that they are treated appropriately. I mean, they are innocent until proven guilty. But these officers are out on the street acting as judge, jury, and executioner. And when you watch this video and you watch it all the way through, through the car ride, he's trying to tell her he can't breathe. And she doesn't even take the time to pull over to check on him. And she is so surprised when she finds out, when she, when she tries to get him out the car, when she gets to the station. So the charges against her are appropriate. And like I said, this is a new day that, um, if you recall, when we first started talking about introducing body cameras um, and having officers wear them, officers were initially turning them off, uh, forgetting to um, tab them on at all. And now there's so many states that have laws that make it illegal and act, um, and can charge officers with crimes for not having their body cameras on because this is showing us what's really happening on the street, the complete indifference and the taunting of these individuals who are still people with rights. So this video is is incredibly upsetting, but the a right thing is happening here in Texas, Canada. 
Uh, it is. Uh, it is very. Um, it is very hard uh, to, to to look at this, uh, Brittany. And and the reality is this here. Um, you know, he's dead, and the man is telling you. But now they create oh felony faint. <laughs> felony faint. Roland, I mean, it's every week. Per usual, I'm I'm disgusted, I'm disappointed, but I am never surprised. This is a constant and ongoing reality with policing and dealing with those who are sworn to protect and serve. Um, and, and we know that the police, they're not serving us. They're not serving people of color. They're not serving working class folks. You know, they serve the ruling class and they protect property, not life. Um, you know, as the report said, they were deliberately indifferent to a medical crisis. And, and how many times do we see police being deliberately indifferent. And it doesn't matter if it's someone who's been identified or classified as a criminal or if it's someone that's a young, sweet boy and violinist like Elijah McCain. We're we're not viewed as humans, right? Just by virtue of having black skin, we are not viewed as humans. And I always say this, but if this is what policing is, we do not need it. Um, I'm really tired just in general of the entire concept of policing as it has existed and evolved because it's not fair, it's not equitable, it's classist, it's racist. And we all know that getting arrested shouldn't be a death sentence, even if someone is involved in petty theft. What, again, thinking about why someone is involved in petty theft, right, and doing what they need to do survive because they've been historically marginalized and not provided equal access. You don't stop crime by bloating police budgets and hiring more officers. You stop crime by providing access to resources and distribution of money and opportunities, right? And we know that the people who are doing the most serious of crimes <laughs> um, never see time behind bars or very rarely do anyway. You know, it is it is it is just very difficult when when we have to keep doing these stories, um, um, Michael. I mean, how hard is it? How hard is it uh, if if a prisoner is complain if excuse me if someone is detained if they are handcuffed and they're complaining I cannot breathe to pull over and double check. Exactly, but see that's what you do when you think that you're dealing with somebody who's a human being. Mm -hmm. That's what you do when you have. Well, that's what you do when you have somebody who, even though you suspect them of a crime, you still have compassion for their humanity. OK, here in this situation, it, it appears, and I haven't read all the details on it, but on the surface, it appears they had no compassion for his humanity and just it just deemed him as as being guilty. OK, and not even respecting his humanity when he's telling them numerous times that he can't breathe. Uh, then they then, then they use felony faint. I haven't heard this term before, felony faint. Now, I've heard excited delirium, because that's what they tried to say that Elijah McClain died of, excited, mm -hmm. excited delirium, which is the same thing they tried to say that George Floyd died of. But all three of them were fine before police started messing with them. Now, and, and what the question I have, and I haven't been able to find this, is um, they said they suspected uh, that Boykin was responsible for a series of petty thefts and sought to take him into custody. But uh, what was the probable cause? What was the probable cause here? I know you said he was running and things like this, but what was the probable cause to make you think he was responsible for a series of petty thefts? I'm still trying to find out that information. Uh, and that is the thing, Brittany, that, again, every time one, we see one of these stories uh, and, and, and they come up, it's just, it's, it's like the same thing. And, about, and the bottom line is uh, having police officers who treat people with basic respect and dignity. I mean, and that's the problem, Roland, that, that they don't. They they literally do not view us as human. And again, I mean, as the story, and just going back to the earliest iterations and forms of policing, it was that we weren't human, right? It was that we were property, and it was to catch us and return us back to um, the owners of the, of the property, right? And we, we truly haven't strayed very far from that. And again, we continue to see that policing is not grounded in protecting and serving. It is not grounded. It's certainly not grounded in protecting and serving black and brown people, impoverished people. It's oftentimes to protect to, to protect the ruling class and to protect property, which is why we've seen several times the National Guard being mobilized, right, when property is damaged. But we certainly don't see any type of care whatsoever when black bodies are dying in custody. It's unfortunate. And again, it causes us to continue to re-examine this call for defunding the police. Folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment.
All right, folks, Seek.com is a black-owned virtual reality company founded by Mary Spio. That's right, a VR is uh, all the rage. Uh, the ability for you to be able to actually be immersed in the space to feel what's going on. Imagine being at a concert and you're watching the concert, but you're actually in the seat in the concert. And so you can be able to see the great uh, videos and all kinds of different things on Seek.com. Using their VR headset, you simply just drop your phone right into here. And again, you're able to then immerse yourself in the experience uh, right there. Uh, also, of course, they have these great headphones right here, the 360 degree headphones. Uh, you can use this for gaming. It's Bluetooth. You can talk on them as well. The bass is tremendous. I love uh, jamming these when I'm on air, uh, airplanes. Uh, folks, uh, you can get these by going to seek.com using the promo code RMVIP21, RMVIP21, uh, where you can uh, get these. And when you purchase one or both of these, a portion of the proceeds comes back to us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. You know, we support black owned businesses, and it's the black owned businesses giving back to us as well. So go to seek.com, C E E K.com, uh, to get these items.